final exams of DM or the DNB nephrology, the case presentation forms the important component in the the history and examination format is very very important because based the based on that only the questions will be formulated. So in this we will see regarding the history and examination format for a glomerular disease that can be either nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome, RPGN or AKI. Why this is important because here in final exam hardly we will get 45 minutes for even the long case with that time we have to complete both clinical examination and the history both the component so that is why history is very uh, that's why we have to be thorough with the history part so that within a stipulated time we can complete the process i have numbered it the sequence is numbered in the subsequent slides so that it forms a checklist you won't miss any component of the history because if numbering is there it will be very easy to keep the track whether we are missing some history or not so to we'll start with if we take the whole sequence of history and examination it have to be divided into five parts part a consists of the basic details of the patient part b which is the most important component from part B only we are going to bring about the etiology, differential diagnosis and complications of the case. Part C and part D forms the examination. I have to put part E separately for urine examination because during majority of the my case presentation I usually forget that urine examination. So that's why the most important components are the basic detail part B. Part C and Part D forms the examination and the Part D which is the urine examination. First regarding the Part A. Part A is the basic details of the patient which is similar to whatever we take in MD medicine only which is the name, age, sex, occupation and residence. With respect to nephrology, the important component is the date of admission and the date of examination. Because in majority of the nephrological cases, the patient might be having a long duration of hospital stay approximately 10 to 15 days sometimes so that is why this detail is very 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 important when the patient got admitted in hospital and what was the day of your examination if the time lapse is between like if the time lapse is there it is very important to tell about the course during hospital stay in the history of presenting illness so in the basic detail you should not miss this important component of the important component which will be very helpful in the uh, making the diagnosis or the progression of the nephrological cases part part b is the most crucial step because this is the part where the examiner can easily get an idea how strong you are in the subject how you are able to make a differential diagnosis once the part b is complete whatever the things is expected from the history it should be clear about the diagnosis whatever the diagnosis or the differential diagnosis for example in the case of gn disease from the history we have to be sure the patient is not having any component of the ckd suppose if it is gn what could be the basic disease what might be the etiology of the disease what are the complications which are associated with is there any attributing factor if the patient received any treatment does the patient have any response and what is the course during hospital stay these are all the very important component in the part b so based on this only the examiner will come to know what is the depth of the knowledge in the subject because if the history is not clear at the end of the history it is very difficult to get these finding of the patient get these points uh, get these points before the examination so that's why part b have to be focused on these things and this can be under the following headings history of presenting my past history personal history similar to the uh, md final exam cases only there will be always some query when i was preparing for the final exam where to tell the course during hospital stay it is not important where the component comes the important thing is these points have to be addressed majority of the time it have to be come under the history of presenting complaints only suppose if it is missed is there any problem no it have to be uh, the information have to be available at the end of the part b that that is at the end of the part b before the summary 
like COVID vaccination history, whether the patient is taking drugs, you can tell in the drug history, vaccination history, or history of presenting in uh, options also. So there is, a, uh, so don't have the doubt where I will tell the history, under which heading. That is not important. The information is important. So coming to the, the history of presenting illness, first to the history of presenting complaints. Sometimes the patient might be coming for the follow-up also. In that case, in the chief complaints you have mentioned, patient K. In the chief complaints you can present, patient came for follow-up. Then subsequently you can start from the history of presenting complaints. In the history of presenting complaints, you have to start with a particular organ or any system wise. This can be like uh, above or a little bit below depends on the, what are the presenting complaints usually the patient presents with the symptoms of kidney or the cardiovascular system involvement in the form of shortness of breath first if we take the kidney we have to clear we have to be clear with these symptoms of glomerulonephritis symptoms to rule out ckd symptoms of renal stone disease and the lower urinary tract symptoms just look at the numbering over here i have numbered over this as per the system so that some history won't be missed for glomerulonephritis you have to ask for oliguria anuria hematuria polar urine frothuria if any component of the history is missing in this presentation you can add it up but the uh, add it up in these components but you have to ask regarding the symptoms of kidney related to glomerular disease then related to ckd few symptoms like nocturia nocturnal polyuria what is nocturia it is nothing but passage of more than 35 percentage of urine of, of the 24 hours in the night like if he passes more than 35 percentage of the urine in the night during the sleep time you can say as nocturia which is a quantitative definition or qualitative wise if he passes more than two times or when when he wakes more than once even if he wakes up two times that you can call as nocturia it is basically because of the adh circadian rhythm with respect to the renal stone disease you have to ask for uh, flank pain abdominal pain and gravel urea gravel urea is nothing but the passage of stones in the urine and with respect to the age and other components of the patient detail you can add the symptoms of or uh, negative symptoms of the lower urinary tract symptom if it is a old age person you can tell about storage symptoms voiding symptoms or the post maturation symptom storage symptom in the form of frequency urgency incontinence voiding symptom in the form of hesitancy over stream post maturation symptoms in the form of dribbling so this completes the symptoms related to the kidney Next, with respect to the cardiovascular symptoms, you have to tell about shortness of breath, palpitation, chest pain, and any giddiness. Similar to the uh, like shortness of breath, you have to elaborate. Similar to the empty medicine cases. Third, regarding the lung symptoms like cough, hemoptosis, foot and protection. Why this is important? Because to rule out any lung involvement, the sequence may be like changed as per the patient symptoms, but these details should not be missed. Regarding the GA, both liver and gastric symptoms, you have to ask nausea, vomiting, jaundice, abdominal pain, abdominal distension, malina, and the constipation, diarrhea. These things have to be asked with respect to the GA and the liver system. With respect to the CNS, ask for seizure, headache, visual blurring, weakness. Next, the most important component because majority of the GN cases are usually associated with autoimmune diseases. So, autoimmune disease forms the most important component in the history of presenting complaints. So, this have to be clubbed together. Here, I am giving an example. You have to rule out the symptoms which are related to SLE, related to ANCA, hypothyroidism and the scleroderma also. With respect to SLE, ask for oral ulcer, photosensitivity, joint pain, rashes, Anka rule out any eye, ear, upper respiratory tract involvement, eye in the form of conjunctivitis, which discharge, hearing, hearing difficulty, nasal pressing, nasal bleed, hypothyroidism in the form of cold intolerance, Reynold phenomena, skin tightening, dysphagia, hair loss. This have to be clubbed together and tell it to be a single go. If any one of the symptoms is positive, you have to elaborate. Next, 
Regarding the chronic interstitial hepatitis etiology, whether the patient is on any chronic drugs, over-the-counter medication drugs, or whether he is taking any Ayurvedic medication, that how to be mentioned. Then history which are related to the infection in the form of fever, any abscess, whether he had any COVID, whether COVID vaccination is taken or not, history of any blood transfusion, any history of sexual promiscuity, history of any tattooing, this is also very important component in the case of GN cases because this will give a clue to post-infectious low-blown nephritis. So these two component of the history of ascendic complaint should not be based till here. The eighth column is the infection column. Ninth with respect to malignancy because majority of the glomerular diseases are associated with malignancy. As per dysphagia, loss of weight, loss of appetite, any breast mass if it is a female. Then next bit. One important component is with respect to the rash and joint pain. If the patient tells the patient is having rash, it has to be elaborated in detail there only before proceeding to the subsequent symptom. What are all the components have to be mentioned in that? It have to mention about the onset, duration, how it started, where it is distributed, whether in the arm or the center part of the body, what is the size, how it proceeded, whether it is palpable or not, whether it, whether it is associated with any itching, burning, pain or photosensitivity, whether bleeding is there or not, any other associated bleeding, whether insect bite is there or not, or drug history intake is there or not. This should come as a set because this will take you to the etiology of the rash, whether it is a palpable rash, non-palpable rash, the type of rash and the various nephrological association we will see in a separate video because video will get more and more lengthy if I discuss about each and every symptom. Coming to the joint pain, if the patient has joint pain, regarding the pain you describe as it is in the medicine cases only but you have to be very clear about onset, duration, morning stiffness, redness and tender swelling, migration, rest, movement restriction, deformity is there or not. So once you tell about the joint pain, from your history, it has to be clear whether it is inflammatory or non-inflammatory. The examiner should not ask. From the history, if you tell these symptoms, they will get the idea you are clear about the joint pain. If the patient have morning symptom, morning stiffness, redness or swelling, it clearly points towards the inflammatory form of joint pain. If these are not associated, if it is improving with the rest, then it can more point towards the non-inflammatory kind of thing like osteoarthritis. So for, for the joint pain, the history is very important. Then coming to the hypertension. This is also a most important history in the history of person. This can be the presenting symptom also. This can be in the coming in the background also. But the important point I want to stress over is, here is, if the hypertension comes, you have to tell about the duration, how it was diagnosed, why it was diagnosed. This component is very very important because for example if a patient was diagnosed as hypertensive 20 years back you have to tell whether, whether he had any symptoms then it was diagnosed or it was on diagnosed on a routine investigation at the time side by side you have to tell about the negative history to rule out secondary cause of hypertension like episodic weakness, palpitation, chest pain any feature of renovascular hypertension like flash pulmonary edema you have to tell along with the hypertensive history so that the secondary causes of hypertension gets ruled out the examiner gets the idea you are pointing towards primary disease or the renoparenchymal disease this history is very important and uh, just look at the arrow over here this slide i have kept the arrow because you have to tell how when how the hypertension was controlled whether it with two drugs one drug and over a period of time whether the patient was taking treatment or not this is also very important because this also gives clue to the secondary etiology because secondary form of hypertension is usually resistant to treatment so that's why these two components you have to very clear about the progression because majority of the time when i was presenting the cases in the first and second year i always forget i will just say patient is having hypertension that is not important from nephrology point of view over a period of time the control is very very important next the diabetes the another most important component diabetic kidney disease is a separate uh, 
separate case for a final exam we will see that diabetic kidney disease in a separate case history format but in gross water things we have to ask we have to ask how it got diagnosed when it got diagnosed why the patient went to hospital why he tested whether it was tested which has to be a one or not then you have to tell about the microvascular complication that is symptoms related to nephropathy like history might uh, overlap like as i told in the first step of the history of presenting illness but you have to adjust accordingly the only issue is the information should not be missed you have to tell about regarding the diabetic nephropathy presence presence of neuropathy presence of retinopathy retinopathy is very very important neuropathy history is very important this diabetic history on a background of glomerular disease this makes the history very very uh, difficult to complete because for neuropathy you have to ask about the presence of cranial nerve involvement autonomic nerve system involvement peripheral nervous system involvement in the form of sensory or motor you have to ask for orthostatic hypotension erectile dysfunction periodic uh, any localized sweating third nerve weakness facial weakness motor weakness for sensory you have to ask whether he is feeling in numbness tingling whether he is able to feel the ground while walking for motor you have to ask about whether he is able to sit or walk and uh, since the patient might be on steroids majority of the time if the patient got treated from the glomerular disease steroid toxicity also causes proximal muscle weakness so this weakness history is very very important so you should have a format how you are going to tell the neurological disease and what are the differential diagnosis you are keeping in mind for the small muscle you can ask about holding of the slippers for the large muscle you can ask about combing the hairs and uh, but combing the hairs and the rising from the sitting position these are all the question you can ask and you have to ask history with respect to the mic this is microvascular complication you have to ask about macrovascular complication also in the form of cardiovascular disease peripheral vascular disease any digital gangrene are the cva any stroke so this cns history and the previously cns history might match you have to like format the history accordingly or change the order accordingly and here also the arrow is very very important you have to tell how was the control how was the follow -up, what was the blood sugar range because if the blood sugar is uncontrolled that is one of the component of progression diabetic nephropathy might be in the background and whether HbA1c was done or not because if HbA1c is more than 10 there is high chances kidney involvement is there if we get the history of retinopathy history of neuropathy it clearly indicates patient is having diabetic nephropathy component so this is a very important component both diabetes and hypertension majority of the questions in the case will be revolving in this area only with respect to hypertension the question will be for sure whether it is primary or secondary Regarding the basic question which will be asked during the case presentation, I will make a separate video with respect to how to differentiate from the history primary or secondary hypertension, how to tell what are all the points favoring diabetic nephropathy. But these things have to be asked definitely in a case of hypertension and diabetes. And don't forget the slide is having arrow, so you have to tell about the progression. So so far, regarding the etiology, we have seen what are all the components. We have tried to rule out the autoimmune disease, diabetes, hypertension, chronic tubular nephritis, any component, majority of the etiology we have covered till the point number 11. So in the history of presenting complaints from 1 to 11, just remember, 6 is the autoimmune etiology. So the order can be anywhere, but this information should not be missed till this time. Then coming to the complication usually the complication in the form of anemia since the nephrotic syndrome is a hyperfoyable state you have to tell about the dvt cns because if the patient is having uremia seizures might be there this component and that component don't no need to repeat the information i am labeling it as a separate columns so that you won't forget that this have to be asked anemia you can ask regarding weakness any blood transfusion history here also important blood transfusion history with respect to anemia also with respect to infection also and menstrual blood loss nutrition this history we have to ask with respect to dvt any unilateral low and swelling renal vein thrombosis history how it present usually sudden onset hematuria sudden onset black uh, back pain 
these are very important for membranous nephropathy in the MCD because this patient if the albumin is very low patient usually develop renal vein thrombosis so that's why you have to little bit stress on these points in the presenting complaints also or here also only thing is that history should not be repeated again CNS I already discussed with respect to seizures headache vision loss why headache hypertension seizures secondary to uremia or autoimmune activity skin any itching cirrhosis ulcerations why because diabetes if the patient is on steroids they are more prone for fungal skin infection why itching because if there is a chronic itching points towards ckd component here also the arrow slide is there that indicates till this point you have to tell about the progression so we have told about etiology almost about the complication since the majority of the patient presents with oliguria, anuria, hematuria, edema during the may, uh, around 3 to 4 weeks or around 3 to 4 days might have passed from the onset of symptom to the present situation you have to tell about the progression what is the edema progression after the drugs what happened whether the residual urine output is improving or not this have to be very clear then course during hospital stay you have to tell this during the history of presenting complaints only whether the patient was started on any drug and another component is very important in majority of the nephrotic syndrome we will be getting relapsing form of nephrotic syndrome or resistant form the patient might be already started on any steroids or any drug rituximab or whatever it is the history pointing towards that should also be there whether moon phases was there or not here you have to be very clear how long the patient is on steroids whether any symptoms of peptic ulceration these are the things you can incorporate this point in the above part that is your presenting complaints any cataract eye surgery what are the drugs the patient is having what happened after the patient took the drug symptoms improved or worsened initial symptoms improved or worsened this is the part where we miss in the nephrological case compared to MD, uh, MD exam cases the progression is not that much important but compared to the nephrological cases here is the part where our knowledge will be assessed whether it is steroid resistant or steroid uh, responsive frequently relapsing or infrequently relapsing everything depends on the response to the treatment if the patient was treated with any drug if the patient was not treated on any drug it is his uh, index presentation you are lucky the history will be short the questions will more towards the theoretical part but most of the time in final exam we will get the cases where the patient is already on drug and uh, you have to tell whether the biopsy was done or not only if the patient tells so till here the components you can go through this after that you can come to the past history personal history and diet history which is almost the same as in the MD cases like you have to tell about diabetes, hypertension, if it is not there, past history of tuberculosis, asthma, allergy, any surgery, personal history, socioeconomic status. This is important component because in the case of any GN case, you have to tell about the education, the education, the socio socioeconomic status because the pain, you might have to decide on rituximab. So you have to know what are the uh, treatment option you are going to plan because rituximab is costly so our cyclophosphate is less costly or steroids are less costly that we have to show the examiner we know this component also because managing a patient forms a overall management so this component is also very important nowadays examiners are focusing on here also and regarding the tattooing you can tell before or here diet any other adverse social habits smoking diet on an average you have to tell about what are all the average component how many roti how many eggs he is taking because in the nephrotic syndrome protein loss will be there they have to replace with the protein so this diet history forms a little bit important component in nephrotic syndrome sometimes not but have a uh, average history with respect to diet history also in ckd this form a very important history that we will see in a separate video with respect to the CKD history format and the family history in the GN case very important because it helps in the etiological diagnosis in Alport syndrome 
family history will be there sld family history will be there so it is one of the points favoring your differential diagnosis treatment history some people used to write it separately at the end some people used to tell it in the history of presenting illness what i suggest to you is to tell in the history of presenting illness only and post during hospital illness complete there only because there it forms a complete information about the patient then you come to past history treatment history tell what are the drugs the patient is on currently and the birth history is also very important if the patient is less than 20 years and patient develops CKD or GN this birth history is having many components that we would see in a case format history of CKD in that time at the time I will tell what are the things to ask in the birth history so at the end of the part B we have to be clear with the summary so I am summarizing it like this part A we have completed the basic details part B for the etiology we have asked about histories under 11 component for kidney for heart for lungs for GI tract CNS autoimmune CTID etiology for autoimmune we have asked symptoms related to SLE ANCA thyroid and scleroderma infection malignancy hypertension and DM approximate heading the order can be anywhere depends on the patient presentation the patient present might with, come with fever so this component might come you have to tell the negative history important negative history then and there only for example if patient presents with edema you have to tell there is no history of shortness of breath and subsequently you can come to the uh, GI history before proceeding to the uh, liver history basically 11 components are there don't miss these 11 components and with respect to the complication anemia cns skin and uh, any other uh, complication even if you thought of because of the hyperpoiable state you can put a number and add it up i try to uh, cover whatever i am remembering if you find some other component just add it in this kind of background what are the other attributing history once this is complete you have to tell about the past person family birth treatment and the uh, menstrual history the only thing is don't have doubt where i will fit for example patient have taken drug patient was in hospital where i will keep you can keep wherever you want they won't ask why you kept uh, history of vaccination here not here they won't ask but the thing is the information should not miss and if this the uh, format of the history is clear to you from here till here there will be a uh, overall good summary about the patient and you will can show the examiner that you are having a good idea about the case and that this arrow is very important arrow why it is important because you have to tell the progression how whether the hypertension controlled or not diabetes controlled or not initial symptoms why the patient presented how is it now so arrow is very important so as a nephrologist progression is very important so this is part b if these are all the components if we know and it is numbers so that we won't miss because during my exam before the final exam i always uh, have a thought in the mind i am missing some component of the history so it is number it is a complete history there is probably one or two point might be missed there won't be any gross missing of the history beyond this so you can rearrange accordingly so i am showing so after the summary after the part b is complete you have to tell like this about syndromic diagnosis etiological diagnosis in order of dd what are we suspecting and the comorbidity this should be there at the end of the each summary before proceeding to the examination reaching till this point is was very very difficult in final exam because examiner will be focusing on each and every symptoms we are telling only if this component if you reached this till this point of time and your initial differential diagnosis is correct it almost take you to the borderline and above of the past region because majority of the uh, problem occur in reaching this summary in conveying the patient information to the examiner in a clear cut format only so if you reach written here you are almost done with the case so there is an example of a summary while telling the summary the, uh, the language have to be changed from the patient 
symptoms you have to form your own uh, interpretation of the case and present to the examiner for example i am telling like this the patient might have presented with uh, decreased urine output edema and all so how we are going to present like after the complete of part b we are going to tell us 25 year old female without comorbidity with a rapid onset of renal dysfunction in the form of anasarca over so and so months and hematuria over one week and whatever the positive complaints are only and the patient underwent biopsy treatment was started and my syndromic diagnosis is necrotic syndrome etiological diagnosis is primary glomerular disease always go component wise like glomerular tubular vascular or interstitial so primary glomerular disease my first differential diagnosis is photocytopathy then the question will come why why not points favoring points against points favoring points against if it is only one diagnosis you can stop over there you will gradually get these kind of differential diagnosis with as you keep on presenting the cases but this is the general format next with anemia and hypertension this comorbidity should not be missed in the diagnosis before proceeding to the examination so once the summary is complete after part a which is the basic detail part b till summary if it is complete then it will proceed to the examination since the video is getting lengthy the examination part which is part c part d and e what are the important components with respect to nephrology and glomerular cases we will see in a separate another video